Despite its large population on such a relatively small collection of islands, much of Japan is still incredibly rural, even today, and there are seemingly countless locations that are not just difficult to find, but difficult to reach as well. Most of Japan is made up of mountains, making travel an interesting experience once you're out of the major city hubs. This week, we're going to take a look at what has often been hailed as the most dangerous road on Japan's main island of Honshu, National Highway 157, the road from hell. National Highway 157 is just shy of 200 kilometers long and starts in Kanazawa City in Ishikawa Prefecture and goes all the way to Gifu City in Gifu Prefecture. Most of this road is safe, modern, well-trafficked and well-maintained. But there's one section in particular that has become infamous all over the country for its tendency to claim lives and just make for a rather troubling travel experience overall. This area can be found by the Nukumi Pass, an area on the border of Fukui and Gifu prefectures that sits at a height of roughly 1,000 meters above sea level, and its reputation is certainly well earned. The worst road in the country isn't a phrase that's tossed around lightly, and the area became especially famous for a road sign that stated in very plain terms, if you fall, you'll die. Ouch. So let's take a look at why this deadly stretch of road even exists and why it has such a fearsome reputation. Despite being a national highway, sections of it are closed for roughly half the year due to the terrible winter conditions in the area. It's known commonly as a kokudo, a word that generally means national highway, but when you replace the kanji for the word country with the kanji for severe or harsh, you get a different meaning instead. A road so terrible it shouldn't even exist. And yet it does. The section around the Nukumi Pass is so poorly constructed and poorly maintained that it's a wonder they ever tried in the first place. Located high in the mountains, the area is prone not only to snow in winter, but landslides, avalanches, falling rocks, and other such natural collapses. Barriers were installed in an attempt to keep these natural phenomena in check, but years of abuse have seen these all but destroyed and rendered rather useless in parts. Now, often there's not a lot you can do to fight nature. Japan has actually gotten pretty good over the years of constructing buildings, tunnels, roads, and other such facilities to withstand the wide range of natural disasters they face each and every year. But nothing will ever be perfect, and if it's not maintained, well… But that's not even the worst part. Much of the road near the pass is so narrow that literally only a single car can pass. Remember, this is a national highway. It's meant to connect several prefectures and exists as the shortest route from point A to point B. Yet, a large section of it is so narrow that only one car can pass at a single time. Now, combine this with the road sitting on cliffs one kilometer above sea level with steep drops that are literally deadly and you certainly have a head-scratching road on your hands. At the very least, you would think they would install guardrails, right? No. Numerous sections are so narrow that they literally couldn't fit guardrails, so you're all on your own. There's also a lack of curve mirrors, those round mirrors you often see that allow you to see around corners and blind spots. If you don't know that another car is coming, on a road only wide enough to fit one car, well, that's a recipe for a bad time, isn't it? And it was. Numerous people died trying to traverse this road over the years, and it got so bad that the government installed a sign. Yeah. The infamous, if you fall, you'll die sign was erected in the 1990s, although the exact date is unknown in response to the numerous cars tumbling down the cliffside and killing the people inside. Now, personally, this seems like an absolutely horrific and, well, we tried, response to the loss of human life, but 
It appears it actually worked. After the sign was installed, accidents in the area decreased dramatically. It seemed the threat of death was enough to cause people to drive more carefully through the area, and before long, the number of deaths dropped to zero. That sign, however, was removed in 2018 because, and I quote, it had served its purpose. The local police department reported no deaths in the year or so prior to removal, and therefore they felt it had sufficiently served its purpose. On top of that, the sign had also taken a beating over the years from the terrible weather and was literally hanging on by a thread, now making it a potential hazard as well. Thus, the decision was made to remove it. Now, again, maybe it's just me, but removing a sign that warns people they may die because nobody has died recently seems like an incredibly poor decision. But hey, what do I know? The sign had become something of a sightseeing location, however, so maybe that also had something to do with it. Officials have warned people that the sign is now gone, so there is nothing to see, and please stop breaking into the area. They had found the padlock keeping this section of road closed for half the year tampered with numerous times, indicating that people were breaking in specifically to see the sign something that was a popular talking point online in recent years. Why was the sign removed? Well, likely a combination of all of the above. But either way, after several decades of service, it's now gone, and drivers now have to rely on their own eyes to see that the road before them is dangerous. But that's still not all. In addition to the steep cliffs without guardrails, and sections of road only wide enough to fit a single regular car. There's also several sections of road that feature something called an adai goshi. This is basically a section of road where a river flows across it. Yes, you heard that right. This is by design, and not a fault. Generally, the water is weak enough that cars have no trouble crossing over it, and it helps facilitate the movement of water down the mountain so it doesn't cause further problems. Of course, this is during optimal weather. All that goes out the window if it's raining heavily or a whole bunch of snow is melting. Considering that the area is known for wild weather, I'm sure you can see where this is going. Think nature is done? Not yet. Being a mountain, the area is frequented by numerous wild animals and some of these include bears. You can find several signs along the road warning people that bears live in the area and warning you that it's probably not the best idea to get out and have a look around. These aren't overreactions either. Numerous people have reported seeing bears as they drive through the area lurking in the woods nearby, so best to just keep moving. Thanks to all these terrible conditions, Sometimes National Highway 157 isn't just closed for the winter months, but sometimes years at a time, until it's made safe to traverse again. Well, as safe as it can be, anyway. Landslides, avalanches and rock slides have all put the road out of commission at some point over the years, as well as the terrible floods in the area from all the rain. It is, in essence, a collection of all the worst possible conditions you could imagine for a road. And they made it into a national highway. A national highway that can't even be used for most of the year. Why would they make this road? The answer is very simple. There wasn't a lot of choice. The terrain of Japan is often terrible for movement, and this particular road started construction in the 1950s. It was then upgraded in the 1970s, but ultimately there's not a lot they can do to change or fix it. The terrain simply doesn't allow for it. And at the end of the day, it isn't the only way from point A to point B. It's the quickest, yes, but not the only way. Much safer detours will easily take you around the death zone. They'll just eat up a little more of your day doing so. Probably worth it if it means not being mauled by a bear, crushed by a rock, washed away by a wild river, or falling over a cliff, I'd say. 
Oh, and there's no cell phone service in the area either. Naturally. But what do you guys think about this one? Do you have any terrible roads in your own country that make you question why they even exist? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you again next time.